Good morning, this is Chris Shoemaker, also known as Yehuda Ben Shomer, and you're listening to Coffee with Chris, the time of the day where we share a cup of coffee and share a bit of the Word of God. All right, this is Thursday, our fifth Sidra, our fir- fifth Aliyah of this Torah portion of Re'eh, which means to see, and is taken from Deuteronomy chapter 14, verses 22 through 29. So let me read for you verses 22 and 23 and 27. It says, every year... You must take one-tenth of everything your seed produces in the field and eat it in the presence of Adonai your God. In the place where he chooses to have his name live, you will eat the tenth of your grain, new wine and olive oil, and the firstborn of your cattle and sheep, so that you will uh, learn to fear Adonai your God always. Okay, so this is talking about an aspect of the tithe. We know that tithe means tenth. We know that it was first introduced to us in Genesis where uh, Abraham gave a tenth to Melchizedek after victory in battle. And we know that when the Lord instituted the tabernacle and, and the whole sacrificial system, that a tithe was required of uh, the children of Israel. And uh, that was one of the ways that they worshiped God is through giving a tenth of their grain, their produce, their cattle, their flocks, their herds, etc. Now, it's interesting that the majority of Christianity believes that the Torah, the law of God, has been done away with, except for the Ten Commandments, and also with the exception of the tithe. It's interesting that they don't believe the tithe has been done away with. Oh, they'll quote Malachi, bring the tithe into the storehouse so that I'll bless you and open the doors of heaven, blah, 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 blah. And they want to preach on the tithe because they want their congregation to bring in a tenth of of what they have. Is that really biblical? Is that what a tithe is? No, a tithe was only for the temple and tabernacle period. The tithe was for a specific purpose. God doesn't need your sheep and cattle. God doesn't need your money. God doesn't need your grain. But who does? The one who's sacrificing the the, the, the grain and the sheep and the flocks and the herds. The Levites are the one who needs the tithe. And that is how they survived. That's how they made their living, is they would take a tenth of the tenth that the children of Israel would give and burn that tenth on the altar. And the rest of it, the remaining 90% of, 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 uh, or, uh, of the... Um, of the uh, offering or whatever, um, they would uh, use to feed their families, to clothe themselves, to make a living. Why? Because the Levites didn't have a land inheritance. They were dependent upon the children of Israel to provide for their needs. And so when they were worshiping God through the through the tithes, through the offerings, through the sacrifices of grain and, and of cattle, etc., they were also providing for the Levites to be able to live and to continue on their work. That's how they made their living. And so it's interesting that, uh, you know, Christendom will, will latch on to that tithe and say, oh, all the Torah has been done away with the, except the Ten Commandments and the tithe. Now, am I saying, is it wrong to give a tenth? No. Do I encourage to give a tenth? Yes. Why? Because it's a good rule of thumb. It's a good rule of thumb. So even though the tithe was specifically dealing with grain and cattle and not money, and it was specifically dealing with the tabernacle and temple, it's still a good pattern to use in modern day worship. Because at the same time, there's a lot of ministers who are full-time ministers. And that is how they put food on the table and pay their bills is through the tithes. So the tithes comes into the synagogue or the church, and you have a portion of it that's used to pay the bills of the synagogue and the church. And it's also used to, uh, you know, uh, to pay the minister, to pay the pastor, to pay the rabbi. And that's how they live and make their living. You also have other ministers who um, are part time. You know, they have another job, but maybe that job part time doesn't make in th- make ends meet. So they're a minister. And they use whatever they get ministering to be able to supplement their income in order to keep their head financially above water. So it's very important. Uh, and, and Paul says, you know what? A minister is worthy of his pay. And so uh, Paul the Apostle uh, even encouraged the believers to, uh, to uh, give to ministers to help them to sustain and make a living. Because most ministers, with the exception of TV evangelists, uh, we're not living in mansions. We don't have private jets. We're just squeaking by, uh, do, making a living the best we can. But why do we do this? Because we know we're not going to get rich off this, and that's not the whole purpose. We're doing this because God called us to minister. God called us to preach and teach his word. We're doing this because of the call on our life, and we believe that God is going to provide for us through his people.
You know, so that's one of the reasons. And, and when we you start talking about tithe and money and pocketbooks, boy, people get really cringy. People get really suspicious because of the hypocrisy and the way that this has been abused in religious circles. We've seen embezzlement all the time. That's why it's very important for churches and synagogues to have open books to show the people exactly where the money goes, what happens to it keep a, a, a meticulous record so that they can be above board so that there's no pilfering there's not even a temptation to pilfer whether it be from the board members or the minister himself and so uh, that's the way we we, we stay uh, full of integrity and not fall into the trap that other people have fallen into all right guys thanks so much for listening go out there and have a great day shalom and god bless